Okay, so let's have a look at uh, an example with an horizontal wall. So what you see now is a production horizontal wall in an old reservoir. So you've got the old rate in barrels per day. And if you look at the pressure, we've got only one PBU here, if we zoom in. Okay, the analyst didn't bother to add some different PBUs for previous shut-in. So the wall has been producing for about 3,000 hours. So this is the first four months of production. And we don't have any PBUs here, and we don't have any pressure data for production period. We should try to, when, when you build the wall test file, you should try to add the PBUs for the different shut-ins. In this particular case, we've got a dynamic gauge, so there is no reason for having only one PBU here. And we should have the pressure data during the flowing period. These are going to give us some critical information on the evolution of the skin over time. And you can pinpoint some actual changes in wall performance. The wall has been producing at about 4 MBD, and we've got a small period at the end at about 3.5 MBD. We don't have any pressure data, so we are not sure whether it's because the wall has been chopped back or we've got a performance deviation. And then we've got this PBU here. So the wall has been producing at about 3.5 MBD for, this is a first estimate of a drawdown of about, this is 85.35, and here we've got about 85.85, we've got about 50 PSI, more or less, drawdown here. So a productivity index of about 70 barrels per day per PSI. An observation that we can make for the PBU, the PBU looks very smooth. But if you look at um, the rate of pressure increase, it looks like a straight line. And we could see that for about, this is 10 hours, we've got for 10 hours an increase of about 5 PSI. So it looks like we've got a straight line with a slope of 0 .5, 0.5 PSI per hour. Okay, over 10 hours we've got 5 PSI. So we've got 5 divided by 10, 0 0.5 PSI per hour. This looks a bit weird. Let's have a look now at the derivative. So we're going to go on period for analysis, double click on this PBU, and derivative. And what we have now is the delta P plot and the derivative plot. OK, so we've got a bit of noise here, but roughly we can see a slope straight line and a hump. This is a stabilization. OK, and then we see an increase in the derivative. We don't see any late time stabilization that could be indicative of the radio flow regime in the horizontal plane. So with this particular test duration, we don't have access to the horizontal radio flow region. So we don't have cage and we don't have the total skin. So we're going to assume, let's say, cage at this point. OK, with our radio flow stabilization. And this is going to give us a permeability of about 13 mRC. Okay, for a cage of about 52-73 millirc feet. So now if I place my alpha slope straight line like this, so we've got a bit of problem with the data, a bit of data quality issue here. Now we have a half length of about 890 feet. Okay, and this is lower than the maximum horizontal length. So we can place our initial slope straight line like this. And we need to specify to pi that we've got an horizontal wall, and let's assume the simplest wall reservoir model first. The, the position of the horizontal wall is at about 300 feet from the top of the reservoir. And we've got a reservoir thickness of about 400 feet. Okay, and we don't see any boundaries, so we're going to click on no boundaries as a first pass. Now I can place the stabilization line indicative of vertical radar flow regime, and as soon as I do that, I've got a KV cage of about 7.3 which is very high, okay, so something is weird here. So I can push the analysis further, set up simulation, and I can do a simulation here. Right, so the derivative plot doesn't look too bad. The match on the derivative plot doesn't look too bad, up to 10 hours. But then you can see that we cannot match this trend here, okay. So we could increase slightly the match. We could improve slightly the match at this point. Let's do 90, 920 feet. Let's increase our KV over cage now using 10. 
Right, this isn't too bad, and I can increase the skin to push the delta p plot upwards like this. So again, I cannot match this part of the data here. In fact, it looks like a uniswap straight line. Okay, so this could be perhaps an indicative of some sort of changes in mobility and heterogeneity in the reservoir. So maybe linear composite behavior, or if you like, an heterogeneity, or it could be maybe a boundary here. Okay, we could try to match this part of the plot by reducing the length of the wall, let's say 500 feet, a bit more than that, 300 feet. And then I will need to push this further downwards. So we already got 10 as a KV over cage, which doesn't look very realistic. So let's increase that to 20. And we are getting nowhere now. Okay, this is not possible. So we know that, well, we've got a problem. So let's go back to 10 and a drain length over 2 of 900 feet. So now we've got an horizontal length of about 1800 feet. And we cannot match this, okay? In addition, our KV over cage is unrealistic now, it's too high. We could add some boundaries okay, to this problem. Let's say some parallel boundaries. And sorry, I need to get my horizontal length of about, I think I had 950 feet, not sure, don't remember. Right, so I can push this boundary, this line towards the left, so decrease the boundary slightly. Now it's getting better. So this could be as well due to an heterogeneity, but we just assume we might have some boundary here. Like this. Now that's slightly better. Okay, and I can increase the skin pushing this delta p plot upwards, so 2.2 let's say. Now it's better. But, okay, we've got only one solution here with this cage. Okay, we assume that now we've got the presence of boundaries and these boundaries prevent the radio origin from developing. But still, if you look at KVA over KH, this is too high. This is not realistic. So we've got a problem here. 